Saturn is not the only planet with rings. Neptune, Uranus, and Jupiter have them too. Check this out. Even though Neptune is so far, we still got the clearest view of its rings over the past 30 years. And check out good old Uranus. It comes with two sets of rings. The inner system consists of nine rings that are mostly dark gray and pretty narrow. There are two outer rings. The outermost one is blue, like one of Saturn's rings, while the innermost one is reddish, just like some dusty rings you'd find in other spots in our solar system. Jupiter's not bad either. Its rings are made up of small dust particles and are so faint that we can only see them when they get lit by the sun or when we observe them directly in infrared light. There's an interesting story about how Jupiter got its rings. The dust the rings consist of formed when micrometeors, which are tiny pieces of rock and debris, hit the small moons around Jupiter. As expected, these impacts made a mess and threw up dust into space. Jupiter obviously saw its chance to get itself some nice rings, so it captured dust into its orbit. These particles of dust are really small because if the impacts were any bigger, gravity would pull the larger pieces back down to the surface of the moons. And these micrometeors keep hitting the moons and add more dust to these rings, so they always keep fresh and a bit new. Okay, cool story, but none of these planets have spectacular rings like Saturn. They're made up of small particles of ice, rock, and dust. And these pieces probably came from asteroids, comets, or moons that broke apart before they even got to Saturn because of its strong gravity. What makes Saturn's rings so special is that they're made of many tiny particles that reflect a lot of light. This is why they're visible, even with an average telescope that amateur astronomers use. When we look through the telescope, we can see the rings clearly because they're big and bright. And these chunks in the rings range in size from tiny dust grains to those as large as a house. And if we could look at those rings, we'd see some of the particles as big as entire mountains. Wow. Imagine if you could sit at the top of it and enjoy the roller coaster ride around Saturn. If you could look at the rings from the cloud tops of Saturn, they would mostly appear white. Plus, each of its rings moves at its own speed. Wow, stunning, right? But the news up there is not so good. It seems that these fascinating rings are disappearing. In fact, ever since the 1980s, Astronomers have known these rings are getting smaller as time goes by. It appears that the particles from the rings are actually raining down onto Saturn's atmosphere. Not just raining. Every day, an amount of water you'd find in an Olympic-sized swimming pool falls onto Saturn. But scientists are still not quite sure how quickly these rings are disappearing and when they will be completely gone. And to see this, we have NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, and the Keck Observatory in Hawaii that will study Saturn over a long period of time. They will track what exactly happens with this ring rain and how it changes during one full season on Saturn. That's about seven Earth years. And a lot of ring material is falling onto Saturn all the time. Somewhere between 880 and 6,000 pounds of icy rain flows onto the gas giant every second. And by this, it's heating up its upper atmosphere. If this keeps happening at the same rate, Saturn's rings might disappear in about 300 million years. Hope humankind will get at least one roller coaster ride before they're gone, though. But while this may seem long to us, in terms of space, it's relatively quick. But this rate could slow down through time, so the rings might be there for more than a billion years. Or, if they start disappearing faster, about 100 million years. It's not like this process happens by itself. Space rocks and the radiation coming from our sun affect all those particles in the rings. They give the particles an electrical charge. This charge causes them to stick to Saturn's magnetic field lines. Saturn's mighty gravity then pulls these icy particles in, and they flow into its upper atmosphere. Saturn goes around the Sun once every 29.5 years. 
As it's making its circle, it moves closer to and farther away from the sun, and its rings do the same. This tilt affects how much the sun's radiation affects the deepest layers of the planet's rings, which is where most of the icy rain comes from. Scientists think that when the rings are tilted to face the sun, there will be more material falling onto Saturn. But when the rings are edge-on with the sun, the material falling onto Saturn slows down. Scientists are not only trying to predict the fate of Saturn's rings, but they also still debate when and how they even formed. Some theories say the rings have been around ever since our solar system formed billions of years ago. But the Cassini spacecraft explored Saturn and brought some data that encouraged the idea that the rings are way younger than that, maybe 10 million to 100 million years old. Another interesting idea says the heavy rain from the rings might make them look younger than they actually are. Whoa, did those rings find their own fountain of youth? But I'm afraid not even that can make the rings last forever. Sooner or later, Saturn will have to face an identity crisis when it loses its beautiful rings. At some point, it seemed this year wasn't so good for Saturn because another one of the planets was quickly heading to take the title of the one with the largest number of satellites. In February of 2023, scientists discovered 12 new Jupiter moons, and Jupiter overtook Saturn to become the leader in the number of moons. These moons accidentally popped out while they were looking for Planet 9. You know, that one hypothetical planet that could be lurking somewhere in the outer region of our solar system. And these newly found moons are kind of dim and small, but they couldn't hide from our powerful telescope and the advanced techniques scientists used to spot them. What's interesting is that nine of the new moons orbit Jupiter in the opposite direction of its rotation, while the other three orbit in the same direction. What happened to those fellas? Do they even know they got into the wrong lane? Some say they could be the remains of bigger bodies that broke apart after hitting some other objects. So typical for space. Now, there's a moon called Valetudo that was discovered a few years ago. Unlike the retrograde moons, Valetudo has a prograde orbit, which means it orbits in the same direction as Jupiter's rotation. What's interesting is that Valtudo moves in an orbit that crosses into the paths of these retrograde moons. Could it be the retrograde moons formed because they collided with prograde moons such as Valtudo at some point? Hopefully, we'll find out. It was a great success for Jupiter, but three months later, things changed when they also found 62 satellites circling around Saturn which means Saturn became the leader again, with 145 moons in total, compared to only 95 of Jupiter's moons. Astronomers have discovered new moons around Saturn using a technique called shift and stack. This means they combined multiple images that shift along with the moon's movement, and this helps to enhance the faint signal from the moon. That's how they discovered even those smaller and dimmer moons they couldn't have previously seen in single images, like those that are 1.6 miles in diameter. They needed to confirm these objects were moons and not some asteroids passing by, so they tracked them for a couple of years to see their orbits around Saturn. So, Saturn may be losing its rings, but there are more moons over there than expected and who knows how many more interesting things we'll find around it. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.